Hey guys, I hope you're ready for three days of super satisfying cleaning. I'm going to be doing some decluttering, taking apart my cordless vacuum, cleaning it entirely, deep cleaning my couch, dusting, cleaning windows, doing a lot, and you're coming with me. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to get moving. Hey guys, welcome to Jamie's journey. I am so happy you're here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for making time in your busy schedule to hang out with me. We have a lot we're going to be doing today. This is going to be spread out over three days. This was day one. This was after a long weekend. And when I say long weekend, not necessarily like a long weekend where we had an extra day. It was just a long weekend. We were at home a lot, which typically means there's a lot more messes inside. And actually, now that it's starting to cool off, there'll probably, probably be more messes inside just because we'll be cooped up for most of the winter. This past weekend, we had a bunch of friends over. We had kids, we had adults, we had people over hanging out in the basement to watch the Ohio State and Notre Dame college football game. Go Bucks! If you guys watched that game, ooh, it was a nail biter. It was, I was so nervous, so scared. Um, but we had a bunch of kids over, so you'll see lots of messes over the next three days. I'm just going to be uh, fo focusing on some deep cleaning tasks and also cleaning up those messes from all of the friends we had over. So the girls were pretty tired so like I said we were we had friends over for the game the game got over honestly I don't even remember the time it got over probably somewhere between 11 30 and midnight I think it was the latest that all of our kids had ever stayed up especially the twins but they were doing so great running around and having fun so they did like a they did a fashion show during the game like all the girls came down they did like a little fashion show where we all had to vote so it was kind of fun they were upstairs playing they would come down do like little dance routines and fashion shows for us and then they would go back upstairs so it was just kind of fun we have a friend group and it's crazy because they all have girls and so they're all about Avery's age um within um maybe a year or two the twins are by far the youngest but they just kind of tag along so it's kind of nice to like I feel like we're at that point where they can all play together but everybody was so tired this was actually Sunday night and so since everybody was up late I mean I was tired this evening Mike was tired the girls were tired and so I was like okay let's set a timer the timer was more for me because I was like I'm cutting it off at a an hour I'm just gonna clean for an hour sometimes I have the idea in my head that I'm only gonna clean for an hour and then I just keep going so I was like nope I'm only cleaning for an hour I'm gonna see what I can get done in an hour and it was also fun because the girls weren't motivated to clean but once I kind of made it like ooh, let's see how fast we can get it done and they could see it visually there on on the iPad 
it worked for everyone. So we got it pretty much all done, but it was kind of a fun little game. You should definitely give it a try. So my micro my microwave I almost had a hard time saying that I'm a little bit distracted I don't know if you guys can hear it I'm actually doing these voiceovers and in my closet and that shares a wall with Avery's closet and bathroom and Mike is in there right now giving them a bath so they're having fun bath time I typically I wouldn't typically do it here because I wouldn't want you guys to hear I didn't want that to be distracting but I have dinner plans tomorrow evening so I'm like all right I'm just gonna knock it out tonight so I apologize if you can hear that in the background but what I was doing here was I was cleaning these windows and with my Bissell steam shot hand steamer and then I was also cleaning out the microwave and the best way method that I find is I take white distilled vinegar I put it in a micro microwave safe bowl put it in there I think I put it in for about seven minutes and then when it's done I take it out and I just spray some Dawn power wash and the the combination of the vinegar and the Dawn power wash just breaks any you know grime or oils or anything that's in there it just wipes up so easily so this is a really good combo vinegar and dawn and then with all of that heat the vinegar kind of coats the inside of the microwave and then you spray on the dawn and it's a great duo mm -hmm. So now that it's the fall, typically in the fall and then the springtime is when I tend to shop for new clothes for the year. Um, I'm not a big shopper in general. I do most of my shopping online and I just typically buy a few new pieces maybe for the winter, for the summer, um, during those seasons. So I've been shopping, like I typically shop at Walmart, Amazon, Target, but my two, well there's actually... There's two boutiques I shop at, which like if I want like a cute shirt for date night or to go out or if there's a, you know, Christmas program and things like that, I'll talk about those. I just don't get a lot from there because I spend most of my day in, you know, leggings, sweatpants, sweatshirts, and, you know, athleisure essentially. But I think a lot of people forget about Abercrombie and American Eagle. They have so many cute basic tees, long, long sleeve tees that are good with leggings. Abercrombie, it can get a kind of expensive, but both places run good sales. So I always watch out for the sales. Um, I just ordered some jeans from Abercrombie and a 
bunch of really really cute sweatshirts so don't forget about those places I always get asked about what uh, stores I shop for my sweatshirts and my you know like Henley t-shirts I love a good Henley I love a good um, like quarter zip sweatshirt big oversized sweatshirts I've been getting those from American Eagle and Abercrombie but watch out for the sales but just wanted to throw that out there Okay, you might be confused. This was actually filmed a couple of weeks ago. So if you notice, I don't have my fall decoration. When I clean, I just clean. So I go around and, you know, typically when each week when I when I when I go to film, you know, I have in my head the things that I want to do. You know, I have my cleaning routine for that week and I know, you know, the basics that I have to do like, you know, every day or every week it's, you know, picking up, vacuuming, uh, mopping, that sort of thing. But then I also choose a couple of deep cleaning tests to tackle that week. And so that's just kind of how I do it. Now, occasionally there will be times maybe on a weekend or an evening if I just have free time and I decide I need to do something or maybe like I think this time something had got spilled. So I knew I wanted to clean the couch. I don't think I've cleaned this since we moved into this new house. I don't think so. Um, but occasionally that'll happen and I'm not filming or anything, but then I will just film it because I'm like, oh, I can pop that into a video some other time because you know I don't clean the couch very often so this was from a couple of weeks ago that I'm just kind of popping in here and then after this day you're gonna see me doing more cleaning and that was from this week but I just wanted to put this in there because I think this is a little bit different than you're just like everyday cleaning and it's just different so I thought maybe if some of you guys get bored or you don't have time to watch the whole video which I do appreciate if you guys do watch the whole video, but I understand you're busy, that maybe I would just put in something that's a little bit different. So if you guys need to do other things, you can do that. But I am going to be taking apart my Tinco cordless vacuum and completely deep cleaning it, like completely taking it apart and deep cleaning it later on in the video. So I'm going to be answering some questions you guys asked me. So a Q&A as I fold laundry. <music> You know what? Let's just get into high point and low point to the week. So if you're new to Jamie's journey, I like to share a high point and a low point to my week just to create conversation and, you know, sometimes the lows are very low like last week. Other weeks like this week, it's just pretty like I'd say a pretty basic high point and low point, like nothing too crazy. But let's start with the low point. We'll end on a high note. So the low point of this week is that, so I've talked about this before, but I've had trouble sleeping, I think since I was in grad school. So I um, was in grad school in 2009. I had an assistantship where I worked in, in, in an inner city high school. And then I also um, got my master's in curriculum and teaching. 
And I think just being in grad school and working and all of that, uh, I was probably a little stressed. And I think that's where some of my sleeping troubles happened. And it's just kind of been a roller coaster ever since. Up and down, I go through cycles and knock on wood. For probably the past six months, I've been sleeping a lot better. And I haven't had too many bouts of insomnia, which have which has been really nice. This week, I did have one night where I did not sleep well. And usually one night does not affect me at all. It's when it starts to be two or three nights. But something that I've really noticed as I've gotten older, which I know if you're older than me, you're going to laugh and say, oh, just wait. So I know it can only get worse. But I notice that when I don't get my sleep, I really get down. I thankfully do not suffer from, you know, depression, anxiety or anything like that. I've had family members that have dealt, friends and family that have really dealt with it. So I'm very thankful that I have not had to deal with that. But I would say that when I don't get my sleep, I really feel down and not in a way where it like affects my life. But if I would say at any point um, that I feel down, it's when I don't get quality sleep. And it's crazy because I think back to when I had babies and especially with twins, newborn twins, I think your body almost just goes into this um, this mode, you know, and the sleep just doesn't affect you as much maybe then because I just don't remember feeling this way. But I'll have a night, like one night of getting very little sleep and the next day I just feel blah. Like I'm tired obviously, but I just feel blah. There's no other way to describe it. And then I get a full night's sleep and I instantly feel, feel better. But I've just noticed that when I don't get my sleep, it dramatically affects my mood. I just feel very down and blah, but then I'll get a good night's sleep, get seven hours, um, and I feel instantly better. So I'm just noticing that sleep is so important, more so as I get older. With these humble lacking everlasting Okay, so before I get to the high point, um, this was another day of cleaning. Girls were at school, so I was just trying to get some stuff done upstairs. Now, really quickly, something that I'm going to start doing, so I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with LTK, like it to know it, um, but I'm going to start linking all of the products that I use in each video in a link in the video's description. And the reason why I want to start doing this is because with the if you go into the LTK, LTK app from your phone or on the website, it gives you pictures of the cleaning tools. Because what I've been finding is I, you know, in my videos, I utilize multiple vacuums or multiple hand vacuums. And people will be like, what hand vacuum is it? Most people just want the link. They don't want like I don't know. I just get a lot of comments like, what vacuum is this? What vacuum is that? They're not clicking on the links. So I thought it would be easier. There will be one link. If you go in the video's description, it will be at the top. And if you click on that link, you're going to see all of the items that I'm using in the video and there's going to be pictures. So it should be easier to find the links that you want. Now I will keep like general links in the description. Um, those will always be there, but just for the specific items, products, tools that I'm using in this video, it will all be in one link. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I think it'll just be a lot easier. So you're not like, you know, if I link, if I use like in this video, I'm using three different vacuums. So, you know, I just think it'll be easier for people to find the exact tool that they need.
All right, let's get to that high point of the week. And I was, you know, thinking about it at dinner. I was like, okay, let's talk about high point of the week. We were talking about the girls' day at school and all of that at dinner. And I was trying to think of what I was going to say. And I was like, you know what? It has been a very uneventful week. And I think that whether maybe you're in the stage of life I am with young kids, um, kids in school, homework, running from activity to activity, um, all of that or maybe you're not in that stage of life but you're just busy for many reasons sometimes an uneventful week is a good thing like some days I wake up and each day I have my list of things that I want to accomplish that day but most of the time I don't get through that entire list because stuff always comes up right especially with kids like maybe I had planned on doing something at one point but then Avery had extra homework or we were gonna read together or somebody stopped over at the house you know stuff always comes up that shakes up your day or your week and this has just been one of those weeks that every single day everything has gone very well we've had no surprises we've had less activities this week so Avery's in softball she typically has practice two days two days a week and then the twins have a soccer game on Saturday but Avery didn't have practice this week she didn't have homework it just is like a low-key week where everything has been going well and sometimes it's just nice to have those weeks and you feel like you can kind of catch your breath and relax a little bit more so I've been catching up on some of my tv shows you know Mike and I have our, our tv shows that we like watching together and then I have my own shows I started watching Virgin River again the I think is it the third or fourth season but I really like that show then I love my real housewives um I've been watching Orange County and New York I'm trying to think of what else I've been watching but I think those are the only ones oh southern charm on bravo i'm a big bravo girl so i've just been catching up i've been relaxing and catching up on some of my favorite tv shows and it's just been a really good uneventful week So I always feel weird saying this um, and explaining things that a lot of you guys probably already know, but if you're new here, you're probably wondering why we don't have a shower curtain in the shower. And it's because the layout of this house, which we did not choose, well, we, cho we chose this specific floor plan, um, but we didn't design it or anything. It was our builder's floor plan. My oldest daughter, Avery, she has her own bathroom off of her bedroom, and then this is a Jack and Jill, so this bathroom is connected to the twins' bedroom, and then another bedroom, which that bedroom right now is just the playroom. It will eventually be one of Addison or Emery's room, and then they will share the Jack and Jill bathroom, but right now, with the girls being so young, they don't all need their bed. 
their own bathrooms so the twins do use that bathroom like if they have to go potty in the middle of the night or you know we brush our teeth and all of that but right now we're not going to dirty another shower so that's why there's no shower curtain on there i do want to do some decorating in there but it's just not high on my list of things that i i don't know but i'm just keeping it pretty basic right now but i do i would like to add a little bit of sunshine in that bathroom like some rugs and make it a little bit fun for the girls i think i'm just going to wait until something just really like till, till i'm like browsing the aisles at Target or Walmart and something like really sticks out. I am telling you, I love this damp duster. So it's a Scrub Daddy, that's the brand, Scrub Daddy Damp Duster. And it's, the sponge is actually hard and then you run it under hot water and it gets soft. And so you're essentially dusting without chemicals, without a cleaner, and it just does such a good job. I couldn't believe, well, like, I don't know why I was surprised. I haven't cleaned these blinds in a long time. The blinds are pretty dusty. But I just love seeing all of the dust that comes off of them. It's just, it works way better than just a rag or anything. I love the stamp duster. Um, even the windowsill. I'm like, how did that window windowsill get so dirty? I have no idea. But then what I do is, so you just use it. And then if it gets a lot of dust on it, you go, you just rinse it under water. And you can use it again. So it's just, it's, it's a really, really good cleaning tool. I use it on baseboards, blinds. I mean, you can essentially use it on anywhere that you have to dust but I don't know if you guys notice but they are building a house next to us so I think I heard at one point it might be maybe a model home I'm not sure but then I, I think Mike said that they were gonna go away from that and someone did purchase that house so we will have neighbors I think right now they're saying almost 18 months from start to finish so it'll certainly be a while before we get neighbors um, but they did start construction so it's been kind of loud um, but I don't know it'll be fun hopefully they have some little girls or girls can have some friends to play with So it was time to deep clean this vacuum and this was so long overdue. This vacuum, I kind of, it got really dirty because I think it was in August. So sometimes I will use baking soda to deodorize um, mattress, couches and all of that. And some had fallen on the ground. I think there was too much that had fallen on the ground at some point and I accidentally vacuumed it up. And when I did that, you have to be careful because if you use baking, if you vacuum up baking soda, it can clog up your vacuum. And so what had happened was some of that, I, I had kind of cleaned it out I didn't take it apart, but I did clean out a little bit, but some of, like you can see right there, I think some of the baking soda had gotten wet some in some areas and then just kind of clumped up in the vacuum, and I've been so lazy since then that I have not cleaned this, and I've just been using it, so it was 
time to do it and I just had the time today. So I just took it apart. Make sure you take out the filter. Um, I pulled the filter out and I run that under hot water. And then all of the other parts, if I can run it underwater, I will. If not, I take the isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth and I just kind of um, wipe it all out properly. But if you have this vacuum, you're just taking it apart essentially, you know, rinsing the parts that you can underwater, wiping them down with a, you know, cl this cloth is a dry cloth with some alcohol and then you'll see me get into that that base part here in a minute what I did was I took a penny and you'll see this little circle part right there you stick the penny in there and then it all pops off so essentially if you're cleaning any vacuum you're just going to want to take all of the parts off that you can and then you know remove hair wipe things down with a damp cloth run anything underwater that you can go to youtube and search how to clean my shark vacuum how to clean my tinko vacuum it might not be your exact model but maybe it can give you some tips or tricks on how to clean your specific brand of vacuum and that's what i do but it's not too bad um, another tip is to take you'll see me do that here in a minute but i take a butter knife and I wrap a Clorox wipe around it to get into some of the grooves. Cause you'll see, I'm gonna go in here and I was able to wipe all of that gunk out. I know, so gross. But then there were some areas that I couldn't get to. So I took the Clorox wipe, wrapped it around a butter knife and then was able to get into those cracks and crevices to get all of the excess gunk out. That's such a gross word, <laughs> but it's true. So I want to tackle this area. It is nice to have this area, like a designated junk area, you know, stuff like if we get a paper, Avery or the twins bring home a paper on Monday, we need it for Thursday. It's just kind of nice to set it all right here. But what ends up happening is it becomes a drop place for everyone. So we have some Halloween decorations. We have some socks. Those are clean. Avery had double layered her socks this morning. I don't know why. Um, and then they ended up bothering her, so she took those off. But this just becomes a drop zone for everything. Um, so I find myself frequently coming in here and just doing like a, forcing myself to do a five minute declutter. <laughs> This is an area that I actually need to go through. Um, I'm already starting a list in my head of areas that I need to declutter. You know, we moved into this house last December and when you move in, you kind of just you do your best to organize it in some way, but there are areas that you just kind of throw stuff. So this is one of those areas. And then now that we've been in here almost a year, it is time to go through and declutter. So I definitely want to go through these cabinets here soon. We'll see, but stay tuned because I'm going to be answering some questions that you guys asked me doing a little Q&A when I fold some laundry here in a little bit. Look at beautiful stars. I want to drive a faster car. They my troubles to rest. Blow the smoke through my cigarette. 
that's looking fine And I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself or I can be someone else No one stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold all right so i'm just gonna get into some questions that i got and then it will continue into when i'm folding laundry so one question was i would love to see more of your workouts and what you eat i know you do mainly cleaning content but i'm so interested in your health journey here is my one piece of advice i get asked a lot about the workouts that i do i'm going to tell you I mainly run four to six miles um, two to three times a week. I have a spin bike that I do spin workouts in if I need like a, a just a quick 20 minute workout that'll kick my butt. And I do Caroline Gervin on YouTube. It's free. She has strength training workouts. So I kind of mix those in for about five to six days a week. And the key here is not the workouts that I do. I think people think that the workouts maybe that I do are superior than you know maybe other workouts or they see my consistent routine and think that the workouts that I do could work for them and here's what I'm going to say my biggest piece of advice if you want to work out find a workout or fitness program that works for you okay I love to run but I know a lot of people don't my husband hates to run he hates it so if running was what he was forced to do. He would not work out six days a week, but you know what? He does work out six days a week because he does strength training. Everyone is different. Everyone has their own preferences. And I know life, I know life is busy for you. I know you don't want to work out because you know what? I don't want to work out five to six days a week. I mean, there are some days I want to work out and other days I don't. You have to find a workout program that works for you because it's not the specific workout that will create results. It's the consistency and the discipline. I have worked out for five to six days a week consistently for years, as long as I can remember, even throughout pregnancy. I never not get in five workouts a week unless I'm sick or something crazy comes up, but I always make the time for those workouts. So my workouts aren't special, I would say. It's just the consistency and discipline. So running, because I love running, but you it's the spin workouts and Caroline Gervin strength training, but you try different things. Put your, you know, try, there's so many different apps. I've tried a lot of different apps and sometimes they work in specific um, seasons of my life. Sometimes I'm just feeling like I just want something fun and upbeat and I've used the Obey Fitness app. That's a fun one. Open Fit is a fun app. Try different apps and find something that works for you because at the end of the day, you're only going to see results if you're consistent, even if it's walking walk five days a week and you will see results if you're doing nothing so just find a workout routine that works for you and stay consistent another really good question someone wanted to know what was one of the hardest seasons of life that i faced that you have faced and how did you overcome it so easily this one is easy this one is going through infertility so if you guys didn't know i have pcos which was the main cause of infer infertility on in my part. So I could not get pregnant. We could not get pregnant um, with our first child. And I ended up going on Clomid, with, which is a fertility drug to help me ovulate. And then I was able to get pregnant with Avery uh, after three cycles of Clomid. Between Avery and the twins, Mike developed some male infertility. So because I had inf infertility already, he had it at that point. We had to do IVF. We did two rounds and we finally got our twins. And just, we started trying to get pregnant with our second. It was, Avery was a year and a half and the twins weren't born until she was four. So those years, I mean, every single month, every, it was charting it was tracking it was scheduling it was being let down every single month like I just can't even begin to tell you how hard it was and 
um, I remember when we made the decision to do IVF and I remember it was a really hard decision because we felt like it's so expensive. Like, should we do this? We already have a child, you know, luckily we had Avery and we're like, maybe this is just it for us. And it was just so expensive. We're like, should we do this? And once we made the decision, I remember telling a friend, I almost feel like I'm finally able to come up from underwater and breathe a minute. Because when you get to IVF, everything is on somebody else. The doctor is controlling everything. You're on a schedule and it was all taken away from me. Um, infertility can be very, it's a very emotional, mentally draining and emotionally draining process. And it's all on you tracking what cycle it is. Are you ovulating? Should I do this? Should I take this? Should I take this medication? And it just gets to be a lot. And when you go through a through IVF, you're just told to take this today, do this, we're going to control this. And I just felt like I was able to let go and have someone take it over. And after years of that, it was just absolutely draining. So definitely one of the hardest times of my life. Another good question, and I'm not going to get through a majority of these, so maybe I'll pick up and do it next week or the week after that, but someone wanted to know, actually it was the same comment, someone said, what is the best thing about Mike and one thing you guys struggle with? So the best thing about Mike is he is the yin to my yang. I have a type A personality, um, I am a go-getter, I'm very disciplined, I am... I can get in my head a lot. I overthink things. Mike is not at all. He is very laid back. He is ambitious in his career, but he's much more laid back in every other aspect in life. And he just does what he needs to do. And then he's good. He's relaxed. And I am go, go, go. If I finish my to-do list, I move on to the next list. So laid back. Honestly, he's just always like, Jamie, it's fine. I got it. I'll take care of it. If there's anything he can do to make my life easier, he'll do it. Because sometimes I get like all worked up and he's like, it's not that big of a deal. I'll do it. I'll take care of it. So I think for me, I just like, he's my safe space. If I feel overwhelmed, I feel frustrated. I feel like out of control. I can go to him and he calms me and he just says like, it's going to be okay. He's one of those those people that it's kind of like when you're a kid, you look to your parents that if you go to them and they're scared or they're worried about something, that's when you know it's bad. And that's how I look at him is he's just, he's my calm, you know, um, and he's my rock. I've been, he's been at my side since we were 15 and I hate to say like, we've never had any like serious issues. I mean, of course we've had some super highs, we've had some super lows, but in the grand scheme of life, there's never been anything like seriously rocky or anything that seriously tested our relationship. And so I just like, I trust him with all of my heart and he is just, he's my rock. Now, after I just sang Mike's praises for almost two minutes, um, the follow-up question to that was, what's something that you guys struggle with? And I think that's important to talk about because just like any other couple, we have our arguments, we have our disagreements. And I would say the biggest thing that we struggle with like on a day-to-day -day basis is we approach things differently. We operate differently. I am... A, I never procrastinate ever, ever, ever. I don't work well under pressure. I like to work ahead. I like to get ahead. And Mike is, I'm going to wait till the absolute last minute. And that's when he works best. And that drives me crazy. Like if I'm like, hey, can you do X, Y, and Z? He's like, sure. Then I'm like waiting. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And he's like, I promise you, I will get it done. So he, that's just an, like a small example, but we just operate completely just completely differently. Like, you know how some spouses work together, maybe in a specific industry? Mike and I can never, ever work together. We've talked about this a million times because he just does not operate like I do. We would argue way too much if we ever worked together. Um, I'm also, I don't know if you guys would be surprised by this, but I am kind of a doom and gloom person. I am definitely a glass half empty person and he is a glass glass half full. He's always looking at the positives and I'm like, if I'm worried about something, I'm like, it's just not going to go right. It's going to go bad. And he's the exact opposite. So we just approach a lot of things differently. Now, I think that's why we work so well together, but 
I would say just struggling with, especially when you're working together, like we are a true partnership. We work together to raise three kids. So when you put two people who are complete opposites, you know, obviously you're going to have, you know, little disagreements or things that you struggle with. I would say luckily it's honestly not as bad as it probably should be since we're so we're so different but maybe we just are so different that we just balance each other out um and i guess it works with us but i will answer more questions in an upcoming that's video that's it we're here we're at the end thank you so much if you're here thank you for sticking around to the end i'm tired i probably look tired i did not sleep well last night i've been sleeping really really well lately i've had sleep problems in the past but i don't think i've had any sleep issues and like probably been six months so I've been doing a lot better but I think that I slept really really good I went to bed earlier than normal for whatever reason like the past for like three nights in a row consecutively and I just got lots of sleep and I think last night I just don't think I was like as tired um so I'm tired now <laughs> I'm sure I'll sleep good tonight um but that's it thank you so much for being here I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful week and just know you can handle whatever comes your way this week. I promise you can do it. You can. Okay. All right. See you guys next time.